Yeah, I'm going to just jump right in there, you know, with Whiskey Gypsy. How did you get involved with with Eric and his team and, and come up with Whiskey Gypsy? I mean, from from my perspective, it's primarily dumb luck. Uh, right place, <laughs> right time, maybe. <laughs> no, it's 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 always an honor to work with good people and to meet good people and companies that are innovative and passionate and driven. Um, and there are so many people starting whiskey companies nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's been this case for a little while now, but there seems to be new uh, new whiskey brands coming online all the time. And uh, somehow I end up getting a, a phone call every once in a while from some budding entrepreneur in the whiskey space. And, um, and the default answer is like, no, not, not really interested. Um, you know, because there's so many cookie cutter, uh, there's just so many cookie cutter brands out there. Uh, and, and I got to meet first, I met uh, Raj Alva. Uh, and then later I, I met Eric Church. They're the two co-founders of Outsider Spirits, which produces Whiskey Gypsy. Um, and and I was really curious to see if they were going to uh, attempt to break the norm or are they just going to go with the flow and do what other people were doing. In, in both of them, uh, you know, they had discussed previously, but in both of the conversations with them, they were insistent that they were looking to be innovative and, and, and break rules and... Uh, uh, abide by tradition when it made sense and discard it when it didn't and that's speaking my language um so you know they the opportunity came out of the blue and uh i kind of poked at it to see you know are these are these folks as innovative as as they claim to be and the answer at the end of the day is definitively hell yeah hell yeah they are these are like two really aside from being very successful in their own fields. These are like driven individuals who, uh, you know, take chances. Well, I was going to say that first release with the, the three vastly different, you know, whiskey that you kind of put in there is range of, of things with the single malt, the Canadian rye, the bourbon, uh, the kind of the traditional, more traditional bourbon. How do you, so you do that for the first one. For the second one, how do you, where do you go from there? I mean, I feel like you've hit, you pulled three different strings for the first one. Now what do you do for the second one? Well, so we have a couple, I should tell you, products coming out. We have uh, <laughs> another legacy, so another cross-category international blend that will be coming out in a little while. And it is, again, it's a riff on the same concept of this sort of reconstituted bourbon mash bill. What I'll, what I'll tell you is the, the next legacy, uh, all of the spirit inputs are over 10 years old. Um, they're from three different countries, um, and uh, it's a riff on a traditional high rye 36% mash bill. And I can assure you, it's a whiskey unlike any other that's out there, and it's fantastic. Um, we're really proud of it. It's been going through the prototyping period, and we've kind of moved up to the uh, the medium size scale, and, and, and soon we'll be doing a production run of that. Um, so that's the that's the next legacy series that's coming out, but. Even before then, we're going to be releasing actually two other products. So we have a a lot going on. Um, one that we're very excited about is the first release in a product line that we call Explorer, and uh, that's you know, Leg- Legacy is certainly our sort of highest end Halo brand, um, kind of most uh, innovative limited edition. You know, when it's gone, it's gone. Um, situation. <coughs> Excuse me. Explorer is a little bit different. <clears throat> it's more accessible. Uh, it's at about the $69 price point. Um, and it is, uh, it's what it says is it's going to be an exploration of, of, of really the world of whiskey and wood. Um, mm-hmm. So experimenting with all kinds of unique finishes. Uh, the first one, which, which we'll be dropping any time now, um, is uh, it's, it's, it starts with a six-year-old whiskey, a uh, six-year-old bourbon, actually. It's a blend of two bourbons. It's a 21% rye bourbon from Kentucky, six years old, and a 36% high rye bourbon from Indiana. We blended Ooh. those two together uh, to create a mid-rye, right? Um, and I, I like love <laughs> mid rye because you get the sweetness that you get with like a conventional lower rye bourbon but you also get the higher spice of the high rye. And if you can find the right balance between the two of them, 
you get something that's really complex in a way that the 21% or 36% aren't by themselves. You bring them together and you find sort of the, the right ratio, proportions, frequency, blend, um, where the character really is integrated well and you get the best of both worlds. So we started with a, a mid-rye whiskey blend for Explorer 1. And then, you know, we, we were in a room drinking whiskey and talking about, you know, stories and things that inspire us. And one of the things that sort of inspires Whiskey Gypsy and, 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 and sort of where we come from in terms of uh, travel and, and, and going around the world and, and exploring the world of whiskey um, but also where we come from is one of the concepts that, that we were discussing was like the, the notion of the troubadour, the, the traveling musician, poet, um, and how, you know, we didn't want to be too on the nose, you know, but it, Eric in a sense is like a modern troubadour. Uh, he's been touring around the country for a long time, around the world for a long time, singing his songs, um, writing his songs, and, and that whole profession that he's a part of it, that goes back a long time. It goes back hundreds of years, right? Mm -hmm. And you track the troubadour history, you know, where, and Eric is from Appalachia. Like, he's from North Carolina, the mountains of North Carolina. And in the United States, the mountains, Appalachian mountains, that is like, that is like the cradle of American troubadours. That's like where American folk music came from. A lot of it came over from Ireland, Scotland, England, and other places as well. Found fertile ground in the Appalachian mountains. Um, but before that, if you start tracking it back, because we, we like history and we're talking about, okay, what's the history of the troubadour tradition? It actually starts in the forests of France, hundred like 800 years ago. This is where the first troubadours came from. And one of the first places that this new art form of writing about the heart and setting it to music and traveling around and playing it on stringed instruments, um, it came from a, a specific forest in France called the Trancé Forest. And if you love wine, you know that the Tron, if you know, if you loved wine and, and have heard of the Tronce forest, you know that that is where some of the best oak casks in the entire world come from. Um, Bordeaux, one of the great wine producing regions, gets just about all of the wood for its casks from the Tronce forest. It's some of the most expensive oak in the world. It's some of the most flavorful oak in the world. And it has this balance of sweet and spicy that complements the whiskey blend that we had made, right? We had had this mid-rye base that's kind of sweet and spicy. And what we decided to do was age it with two different woods from uh, hmm? the Appalachian Highlands, as well as the Tronce Forest, two places where the troubadour tradition is really strong and comes from. So it ties into the brand and who we are, um, but it's also sourcing the finest oak available in the entire world, some of the finest oak available in the entire world, um, to create something, you know, hopefully a whiskey that has depth and finesse, right? Like, which is kind of a, sometimes a, a challenge. Um, so that's where the idea of, uh, of the new Explorer came from, like conversations and history and travel and, and who we are, you know, music's in our DNA. Um, and so we wanted to, you know, tip our hat to that. Well, it sounds fascinating, and I, and I love that that connection there, and how how you're able to do that. And 